Hello zusammen and welcome to Learn Deutsch Gaming. So, if you have a spare smartphone lying around, what can you do with it? Well, first of all, you can turn it into a music streaming device, like what I've done with my iPhone 4, um, by installing Spotify or Google Play Music onto it. Well, it. But today I would like to talk about how I want to turn my HTC M7 into a um, media streaming slash gaming machine, sort of like a poor man's Ouya, if such a thing can exist. So I've laid down two rules for my project. Well, first of all, it should not involve routing because not everyone wants to root their phone, even though I've have, but not everyone wants to root their phone and void their warranty. Secondly, it shouldn't be too expensive. You know, if it costs 200 euros, I might as well just go get, you know, a Razor micro console and be done with it. So let me briefly talk about um, the hardware that you need. Well, obviously you need your smartphone, but your smartphone must support MHL. So if you're not too sure what MHL is, or if you're not too sure if your phone supports MHL, I will post a link in the description box below and you can check if your phone indeed supports MHL. Second thing you need is an MHL adapter or MHL cable. Um, you know, this thing, you can get these things from your manufacturer, from the manufacturer of a phone, so official first party hardware, or you can get it, you know, third party um, cables like this. I paid about 12 euros for this thing. And, um, but if you're buying a third party cable, please be aware that there are two versions of it. There's a five pin version and there's a 10 pin versions. So, you know, please be aware that, you know, don't buy the right cable for, your right phone, do a bit of internet research. And thirdly, you know, I need a wireless input device. So in this case, I bought a Moga Pocket. Well, first of all, because I bought this over Pro Power Hero or whatever versions there are out there, because it, it was selling on Amazon for really, really cheap. I got it for 18 euros. So, um, and it does, but it doesn't feel cheap. Um, it has nice rubberized grips at the back. And, you know, the buttons are clicky, but this doesn't feel as nice as the one on um, the new 3DS, but that's okay. But I would suggest that if you have um, the budget, please get, you know, you should, go, you should go out and get the Pro Power or Hero version over the pocket because the pocket has its limitations. So now that I've connected the Moga to the phone, I can show you around the Moga Pivot app itself. So first of all, you realize that it kind of simulates a console-like experience. Inside the app, you can control, you can navigate the menus um, using the thumbstick itself. Um, the app also collects all the games uh, that are compatible with the Moga and you can launch your games from the app itself. For example, if I launch Shadowgun Dead Zone, which you will find out later, is not a very good example because even though it supports the Moga, you can control your on-screen character using your dual thumb sticks, the menu itself doesn't support um, the controller. So you cannot park your phone three meters away from you and sit back on lounge on your chair. So what I'm trying to say is it's not a truly wireless experience. So if you're looking for something like, you know, let me activate this app and I would sit back and relax and control everything on screen from four meters away, it's not going to happen. And even though there's another unofficial app called the Moga Universal Driver. What it does is it turns the Moga into a virtual keyboard so you can you know map the buttons to various key presses and you can navigate the the, the UI with the Moga. But then again, you know the apps itself, for example Google apps like YouTube, um, Google Play films, they don't support um, the key presses very well. So navigating the menu itself is a pain and it's close to impossible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some gameplay footage on the screen. And if you like the video, like, favorite, subscribe. If you have a question, you know, leave them in the comment section below. And if you have any suggestions to make my system better, please let me know too. And I'll see you next time. I'm the Gamer. Auf Wiedersehen. 
So as I've said before, you have to navigate the menus in Shadow Gun Dead Zone using the touch screen. So I had to click the phone to the Mogul, sort of like one of those plug and play mini consoles, just a little bit more intelligent. The gameplay is smooth, no 60 frames per second, but considering that it's running online on a mobile device, it's quite an achievement already. Overall, despite the minor annoyance with the menu navigation, I enjoyed Shadow Guns the most of the game I've tested. The second game is Reaper, a cute 2D RPG. Graphics are bright, colourful, and the game runs smooth. I think 2D games is where this system shines. Also, with the third party driver, you could use the Moga for emulators to play <coughs> homebrew games. Next, I'd like to show you how you could quit directly to the Moga pivot menu without using the touch screen by simply pressing B. Which leads us to the next game, Riptide GP2. The game doesn't recognize the controller. Being a Hydro Thunder fan, I'm disappointed, but it might work on your system and your mileage may vary. The last game, everyone's favorite zombie shooter on Android, Dead Trigger 2. Runs smooth, graphics looks great, controls really really well, and I did actually have a lot of fun with the game, having only played its predecessor using the touch screen. Overall, the system works well, but only in the confines of the MOGA environment. Thank you for watching, I'm the Learn to Watch Gamer, and until next time, I'll be the Zane.